Come on in. What's up? What's good? What's popping? What's cracking? What's percolating? What's really good in the hood? It's your man Theo Butler and I. Say... Hey, almost. What's up with the rock with me, Nation? Can we do that? <laughs> Before we begin, like, share, subscribe. If you like, leave a comment. If you don't like, leave a constructive comment. We're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I feel like I got to preface this. Uh, so, y'all see the hair, right? Should remind you of somebody. Okay. That said... I don't believe in compromising unless we compromise and where both parties can get to a degree something that they want. But me just willy nilly compromising and I ain't got a damn thing to show for compromising. No, I don't believe in that. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is there's no reason whatsoever for me to even entertain Black Panther 2. I digress. That's not what this video is about. <laughs> <laughs> this video is about the latest, greatest hotness to come out of the Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, media spin, Kevin Feige. As in, it was too soon to think about recasting T'Challa. Man, listen, I wish you were standing in front of me. Matter of fact, I wish quite a few people were standing in front of me. At the end of the day, y'all wouldn't because y'all don't have the intestinal fortitude to stand by what you mean when you say it. You don't have the intestinal fortitude to stand by what you mean when you say it. Damn, all y'all like that. And then you be saying stuff that is not consistent. Let's go down the timeline. I told y'all I could do this on freestyle, right? So Kevin Feige says that it was too soon to recast T'Challa. Really? Okay, cool. Was that May 16th or May 18th? We got this covered or comicbook.com. <laughs> Cause Nate Moore, we know on the red carpet premiere, you were telling people to get them to fall in love with Black Panther. You had to get them to fall in love with the child. However, May 16th, May 18th, we got this covered. Same story was reported by comicbook.com. See y'all, y'all gonna see the pictures down here in the video. That's why I like doing videos like this. You and Ryan were talking about moving. The mantle away from T'Challa. Now, I know somebody, somebody who does not have the foresight to go research first is just going to talk Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame film back to back. Endgame was done finishing January 2018. So by the time Black Panther 2 hit the theaters in February 2018, the executives and the actors at Marvel Studios knew who blinked out and knew who got blinked back. My bad, got a phone call. So they knew who got blinked out and they knew who got blinked back. So let's not do that. If you too lazy to use your smart device for that which is supposed to be, for you to be smart, don't come on this video saying nothing stupid. So just a brief recap, if you will, because we know this video is addressing what Kevin Feige said. Do black people read Empire Magazine? Do we even give a damn about what Empire Magazine got to say? No, no, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't buy Empire Magazine when they released the first Black Panther. No, why? I ain't give a damn what Empire Magazine had to say. I did. Did. I, I did. I did. That one time I did, when a black movie come out that you feel like you got to put us in your magazine was not enough to get me to pick up that damn magazine. Because Empire Magazine doesn't, does not, it don't, it ain't for me and you. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. That said, so you got Nate Moore on the red carpet event saying to get people to fall in love with Black Panthers, you got to first get them to fall in love with the child, right? Right. So, shortly after that, you done had a complete 180 because now it's just about the mantle. And this was in 2018, right? And we're doing good so far, right? And then we get around to December 2019 and y'all talking to Chadwick about 
Disney Plus show, right? And then we go around to January 2020 and Chadwick ain't happy. Mind you, we're at cosmicbook.new. Y'all see it? Y'all, y'all, y'all see the thing here? I'll see that. Matter of fact, let me step back for a second because we said Nate Moore in the red carpet event, right? I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna come back right back. I'm gonna hold on. So no I good. just want to warn you. I've seen the movie. He has I've not. not. Ah. He's trying to get secrets I, out tell of me. me. No, you come don't, on, don't let it be spoiled. You want to see it fresh. You okay. don't want her to spoil it for you. <laughs> Ruins the fun. <laughs> So, yeah. Nate, you were a big fan of Black Panther even as a kid, yeah. and it really spoke and connect, connected to you. So what are you hoping that audiences are going to be able to connect with now seeing him on the screen? I think the fans that already love the character hopefully will love him and, and learn about him in a new way. I think people who have never seen him before will learn about a new hero in a new world. The world of Wakanda is so interesting. To be able to spend time in there I think was really important because I think it might change how people see the continent of Africa, which would be great. And for you, seeing this world come to life, can you tell the fans sort of what it really felt like to step onto those sets and see this actual thing in, in life? Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to talk about things or read scripts about uh, worlds, but to actually step on the sets that Hanley Beekler, our production designer, made was amazing. I think all of us had our breath taken away the first time we walked into the tribal council uh, a room, for instance, because it, it just sort of makes it real. It makes it real in a way that it, it's never real until you get there, you know? And what made Ryan the right director for this? You know, he came on after Chadwick had been cast. Yeah. So talk about that yeah. process a little bit. I mean, his, his two films, both Fruitvale Station and Creed, are such great character pieces. And we knew that for people to love the Black Panther franchise, they needed to love T'Challa. And I think Ryan figured out a way to make him really relatable. For somebody who's the king of a, an African nation and also one of the smartest people in the world, that's a hard thing to do. But Ryan is such a great dramatist. Um, and Ryan is really smart about his other characters. So the Dora Milaje, Nakia, Okoye, these are all characters that we think are going to be huge, huge characters for fans. And it's because of the work that Ryan did. What was it like pulling together such, you know, almost your own, uh, you know, African tribal uh, pool of people together yeah. in terms of behind the scenes and in front of the camera? Yeah. What was it like putting together such talented people? It was impressive, and it was impressive how much people wanted to be a part of the film. So from the people who made the jewelry to the people who were dyeing the clothes. I mean, everybody wanted this to feel authentic, and I think everybody went the extra mile. Our cast did a ton of work with our dialect coach to make it sound real. Like, all those details that you sort of take for granted were things that we took very seriously. We hope that it pays off, but it was something that we really wanted to spend time on getting right. Absolutely. If you were going to say, so we're talking live to the Marvel fans, if you were going to say one last thing to them about this film and what you hope connects with them, what, what would you say to them? I would say I hope that you love the character as much as I do, and I hope the action and the humor all, all translates, but I hope we take something away from it as well. They're going to have an amazing time. This film is spectacular. Congratulations. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for take taking care, the time. Nate. Thanks. All right. Of course. <gasps> See? That wasn't long at all. Y'all see Nate Moore? Hey, we, we ain't gonna keep it long. So that's Nate Moore. So you got chronological order. Nate Moore. It's about T'Challa. January. I'm gonna say January 2018. Avengers Endgame wraps up. February 2018. Nate Moore says to get you to fall in love with Black Panther. You gotta get you to fall in love with T'Challa. May 16. May 18, 2018. Nate Moore and Ryan Coogler talking about it's just a mantle. Any, it, anybody can wear it. Like, we ain't even talking about the family at this point in time. And when I'm talking about the family, I'm talking about the family of T'Challa. Like, it's, you got to have royal blood. But in e neither one of these articles do we even mention royal blood. No, it's just a mantle. Anybody can wear it. Okay, so we speed right along. Now, we need to know that right after the movie, Black Panther 2, Ryan Coogler negotiated contracts with Disney. Yep, a couple of series and everything like that. You can research that on Wikipedia. It's right there. Just type in Black Panther, the movie, and when it goes to quick facts, it'll tell you that Ryan Coogler had offers on the table from Disney. Now, the Disney Plus series, Okoye and World of Wakanda, don't that sound like some, some shows we should see Black Panther in? T'Challa in? Maybe. They thinking? Nah. My dog was like, when I say my dog, I'm talking about Chad with both. I don't want that. If I'm not mistaken, that's either CBR. Or, but y'all see the thing right here, right? So we 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 January 2020. Chad was like, hey man, um, what y'all got going on? I got some more movies lined up. And we need to know Chad we always felt like he had more movies lined up. Because if you read anything about Chadwick, Chadwick really did feel in his heart of hearts he was going to be cancer. 
So he was looking forward to this. I know I was looking forward to it. I, quite a few people was looking forward to it. But let's go. Let's keep going. So August 28th, Chadwick Bozeman passes. Hold on. Let me pause for a second. What are the chances we see the character of T'Challa in the MCU moving forward? And what is it like having to balance uh, loyalty to a fan base and to a performer as regal and elegant as Chadwick Boseman, yeah. along with the future of that franchise, that character, and of Wakanda? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I will say the chances that you see T'Challa in our... I'm not, I'm not hedging my bets, I'm being quite honest. Uh huh. T'Challa is, you will not see T'Challa in the MCU 616 universe. We, could, we couldn't do it. I mean, I will say mm -hmm. when, to, when Chad passed, it was a real conversation we had with Kugler about what do we do? And it was a fast conversation. It wasn't weeks, it was minutes of we have to figure out how to move this franchise on without that character because I think we all feel so much of T'Challa in the MCU on the screen, not in comics, right, um, is tied to Chadwick's performance, is, is what he brought to that role, both on and off screen, I would argue. So as hard as it is narratively to figure out what to do, because it's, it's a big hole, um, uh, at no point did we consider recasting him. Mm. So, so, the, so the challenge for Black Panther Wakanda forever is telling a story without T'Challa. And I think it's a challenge we're up for, and obviously we're in the middle of it and, and we're figuring it out. And it's, it's so far, I think what we're getting is, is great. But the challenge of the movie, I think, is to entertain people. But there will be a level of, I think, catharsis and people coming back to this universe without that guy, because that guy and that universe, to me, are one and the same. So as filmmakers and storytellers, you have to figure out how people are going to feel going into your movie and what you want that movie to say about that guy who's not going to be in your movie. Okay, wow. I'm back. Chadwick Boseman Pad. Y'all just saw the video. Nate Moore say him and Ryan Coogler, it took minutes. Anytime somebody tell you it took them minutes to do something, you need to know that's one minute shy of a full hour. See, 59 minutes, you can't say 60 minutes because 60 minutes equates to one whole hour. 59 minutes, that just equated to 59 minutes. So they telling you, they took less than 59 minutes. Did you hear Nate say he spoke to anybody else? No, you didn't. Okay. Cool beans. Because I'm trying to figure out what we're doing this for. Because it's about the mantle. It's supposed to be about the child. Then it's just a mantle. Anybody can wear it. We offering Chadwick roles, right? People trying to say he got, but no, we trying to offer this dude Disney Plus roles. He ain't really feeling them. So then he passed away and you ain't talked to the family at all. It's just you and some another executive. Ryan Coogler, a matter of minute. That ain't taking the family into consideration. Hell, let's spin it forward. Here we go. What would he want Black Panther 2 to be like? Hmm. I can't answer that. What would you want it to be like? I can't come here and ask a Black Panther question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking there. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I would want him to be in it. I would want him to continue Obviously, to be yeah. King T'Challa. Now, I can answer what you aren't asking me. Okay, what's that question? Uh, I see a narrative uh, being assembled by Hollywood. Hmm. And I could be completely wrong, but a black man being a king does not fit the narrative of not at all what they want the world yeah to see. Um, a black man being a victim, yeah, yeah. Black man being killed in the streets, yeah. yeah. But a black man being a king is not the narrative that they want the world to see, and I don't think they liked the response that powerful. came back from a black man being a king. And though I believe that black women are queens anyway, yeah, I think that the narrative that we will see is that the Black Panther will be a female. Next. You think so? 
I believe so. I believe it'll be her little sister, or his little sister. The one, the that's what I think. But mm. a black man being a king is does not fit what the powers that be want. Mm. That's very interesting. You know, it's said that the more we do talk things out, the more we do start to heal, yes, but also the more we start to honor the person too, which is even deeper, I think. Yeah, I mean, I have other battles to to fight that are that are surrounding this. Yeah. So that narrative that I gave um sounds kind of con probably kind of conspiratorial. You think? I think so. Why is that? I got to ask that. Why is that? The journalist in me has got to ask that question. Say it again? The, the journalist in me has to ask that question. Why is that? I don't think anything ha happens by happenstance. Huh. I'm going to leave it right there for now. I got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Like strong grip there, man. I almost came out of my chair. Uh <laughs> I'm back. Did you, that was Derek Bozeman. Did you hear Derek Bozeman say Disney reached out to him? No, you did not. Oh, hold on. Hold on, I'll be back. To acknowledge the devastating loss of a dear friend and member of the Marvel Studios family, Chadwick Bozeman was an immensely talented actor and an inspirational individual who affected all of our lives professionally and personally. His portrayal of T'Challa, the Black Panther, is iconic and transcends any iteration of the character in any other medium from Marvel's past. And it's for that reason that we will not recast the character. However, to honor the legacy that Chad helped us build through his portrayal of the King of Wakanda, we want to continue to explore the world of Wakanda and all of the rich and varied characters introduced in the first film. Writer-director Ryan Coogler is hard at work on the sequel now and will bring the film to you in theaters July 8th, Okay, that's Kevin Feige. Now, Kevin didn't even mention Derek Bozeman. He ain't mention. He ain't mention Derek. He ain't mention Kevin. He ain't mention the, the mother and father of Chadwick Bozeman. He ain't mention Mrs. Bozeman. He ain't mention he was doing it for. He ain't say he was doing it out of respect to the family or anything. What we what we not recasting for? Oh, I got it. We are not recasting because mind you, he didn't say it was too soon. Did y'all hear him say it was too soon while he up there standing on stage? No. He used wordplay. He said it's his, his portrayal was iconic in and of itself. I don't want to have to keep saying this to people because it means I got to keep insulting y'all intelligence. To use the word iconic, you got to have something to compare it to. Here we go. The George Bulldog defense from last year was one of the most iconic defenses in college football history. You know what? We have other iconic defenses in college football history to compare that to. You know what we don't have with Chadwick Boseman? Another actor playing the role of T'Challa live action. But y'all let that dude talk that double talk to y'all and totally ignore the damn brother. That's crazy. The brother, the family, blood. Oh, that's why y'all don't give a damn about what the brother say. Because Nate Moore... Ryan Coogler don't give a damn about the royal blood of T'Challa. Of course, y'all don't give about the bloodline of Chadwick Boseman. Yes, I'm so being dead ass right now. Because the dude came and told you using wordplay and you went ham with it. So what was the reason then? Because let him tell it, it ain't got nothing to do with this too soon. But let's talk about it being too soon to recast the damn role. Because if it's too soon to recast the damn role, why on December 10th are you even bumping your gums talking about a damn movie? That, 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 that. If it's too soon to recast the role, then why on December 10th, Kevin Feige, are you even on stage talking about a damn Black Panther 2? If the whole cast and crew is mourning, why did anybody from the cast and crew have the testicular fortitude to tell you, no, we're not doing it? If you care so damn much about Chadwick Boseman, why didn't you say, you know what? Because of the actor, because of Chadwick Boseman's untimely passing, while we would like to move forward, with the Black Panther 2 project, what we will do now is press pause and pay respects to the family because at the end of the day, it is about the family and the actor. It is not about lining our pockets. And it is about lining your pockets. But I want to be consistent. 
So you didn't say that on December 10th, did you, Kevin? No, you sent your spin doctor, Grace Randolph. Hold on. Now, of course, a huge question will be, what happened to T'Challa in the world of the MCU? Why do we need a new Black Panther? I know many of you don't want to see T'Challa recast, but I told you that's what they were going to do, and Kevin Feige confirmed that at the last Disney Investor Day back in December. So it's happening. So I'm hearing that right now Marvel is debating as to whether or not T'Challa should be killed on or off screen. So stop having the conversation as to whether or not he should be killed off or recast. He's being killed off. The, the, the new valid debate is to how that should happen. So either in the beginning of the movie he could be killed off. I told you that I heard that they were working on a digital... So Grace said it was off the table. Grace said it wasn't even up to, for debate. Grace said... It wasn't a question of whether or not y'all was killing them all. The question was whether or not you was killing them off screen or on screen. Recasters didn't even matter, right? So damn, seemed like December 10th rolled around and based on your mouthpiece, Grace Randolph, y'all had everything, everything written out, right? Because you started shooting in June. Late June is when you started. Think about this, Kevin. And I need everybody to hear this. Why they think y'all give a damn about the Bozeman family? Kevin. You started talking about Black Panther 2. Chadwick hadn't been dead for four months, bro. He hadn't been dead for four months. And you walked your happy ass out on that damn stage talking about a damn movie nobody was asking for. And you started filming again. He ain't even been dead a year. You got everybody back on the damn set. You do. You got everybody back on the damn set. And watch this. Just when you, just when Derek go back and say something to TMZ in December, what did you do? You had your road dog, Nate Moore, go out there and run his damn mouth. Don't, to ring a verse, you need me to play it? Come, yeah, y'all want to play it. What are the chances we see the character of T'Challa in the MCU moving forward? And what is it like having to balance uh, loyalty to a fan base and to a performer as regal and elegant as Chadwick Boseman, yeah. along with the future of that franchise, that character, and of Wakanda? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I will say the chances that you see T'Challa in our, I'm not, I'm not hedging my bets, I'm being quite honest. Uh -huh. T'Challa is, you will not see T'Challa in the MCU 616 universe. We, could, we couldn't do it. I mean, I will say when, to, when Chad passed, it was a real conversation we had with Kugler about what do we do? And it was a fast conversation. It wasn't weeks, it was minutes of, we have to figure out how to move this franchise on without that character. Because I think we all feel so much of T'Challa in the MCU on the screen, not in comics, right? Um, is tied to Chadwick's performance, is, is what he brought to that role both on and off screen, I would argue. So as hard as it is narratively to figure out what to do, because it's, it's a big hole, um, uh, at no point did we consider recasting him. Mm. So, so, the, so the challenge for Black Panther Wakanda forever is telling a story without T'Challa. And I think it's a challenge we're up for and obviously we're in the middle of it and, and we're figuring it out and it's, it's so far I think what we're getting is is great but the challenge of the movie I think is to entertain people but there will be a level of I think catharsis and people coming back to this universe without that guy because that guy and that universe to me are one and the same so as filmmakers and storytellers you have to figure out how people are going to feel going into your movie and what you want that movie to say about that guy who's not going to be in your movie. So what that be like? You got your mouthpiece right out there, but we supposed to believe this is about respecting Chadwick Boseman? How, bro? Because if this was about Chadwick Boseman, why y'all even talking about y'all not might y'all might not release the movie in France? Mm. Mm? Great ass question. If it's about honoring Chadwick Boseman. Why Chadwick Boseman's friends, his fans, don't get to honor him on the same damn day? Why is that, Kevin? Because it's about damn money. It, this ain't never been about Chadwick Boseman. Let me go ahead and say this right now. 
for everybody that need to hear. From the time that you walked your ass up on the stage on December 10th and you totally ignored what his brother had to say, from the time that you had Grace Randolph running her damn mouth, from the time that you had Box from New Rockstar, from the time that you had too many damn YouTubers that called themselves movie reviewers, false leading the movement. Yeah, I said it. I said it. YouTubers, so-called leaders, selling out the movement, leading the movement down to actually support Marvel. That's what it is. You think it's a game? You finna watch, you you want to try to recast, you finna watch the movie for what? Because if they make, if they break even on this damn movie, let me tell you what it is. Dollars to donuts. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If they don't break even on this, if they break even on this damn movie, if they get within a hair whisker a sniff in the financial success that they got last time, they won't recast the child. And everybody know it. They just want y'all to help them get, they, to help put food on their table. Let me keep it a thigh while. I'm not afraid of anybody in this fight. Anybody that's going to rock with the Rock With Me Nation that's for recast T'Challa is speaking loud and clear. Anybody that's hesitating this late in the game when they know damn good and where that movie drop on in November the 11th is because they low-key want you to be docile. And that's been part of our damn problem since we've been over here in this damn country. It's too many want to keep us docile and then too many of us want to be damn docile but then want to stand up and complain about not having equal rights. I'm done with that. Hold on, I'll be back. This, this honor that's being bestowed upon him, first of all, I wish that he was here to receive it. Him not being here has been a point of, of immense pain for my whole family. But as I think about him, I think about how he, how he honored our parents, how he honored his family, how he honored even his, his friends, and he made sure that his friends also had good careers. A point of immense pain. I wish he was here. Let me help y'all out with that. Because some of y'all want to cap for the damn company. Some of y'all that's out here lying for the company, you wouldn't want to go through this your damn self. It's a point of immense pain. Do you know what that means when somebody says it? That means they're still hurting over the loss of a loved one. They ain't got over it yet. And Marvel has enough respect for the Bozeman family that they are literally going to replay how their son, brother, husband, died. All for the almighty dollar and they're telling you it's respectful. How is it respectful to remind somebody of losing a loved one. Exactly how they lost him. Let me paint this out for you. His family was at his bedside. When he took his last breath. They were there. It wasn't a damn cast and crew. It was his family. You ever been by a family member's bedside. When they took their last breath. Have you? I have. It's not something you want to see again. It's about the damn money. They don't give too damn about Chad Rebozo. Sad to say, it's too many black people that smiled in his face that don't give too damn about him. Either. And if they do give a damn about him, this must be their first time 
dealing with loss. Because the way they conducting themselves, they ain't doing a damn thing right about this. If you bury somebody close to you, friend, family member, you know this ain't right. But I keep receipts and I ain't playing nice. I'm not hosting no damn watch party. Watch it for what? For my women to feel like black men are incompetent. For my sons to look up and see black men not even be represented. For our family to see black people torn apart. I wouldn't push that filth on my worst damn enemy, let alone host a watch party for it. I'm so damn disappointed I don't know what to do. And let me just keep it a buck because I didn't want to do this part, but I'm going to keep it where it is. Considering your platform, considering the amount of people that you have rocking with you, you had an opportunity to do something big powerful, life-changing. Something that could have said you really stood for the people. As they said, when Chadwick stepped out in the Black Panther uniform, people cried. They didn't cry because Chadwick stepped out in that uniform. They cried because Black Panther, T'Challa, had finally come to life, 3D. You're supposed to be the leader of this movement. You're supposed to make sure things happen. You're supposed to make sure that above all, we got the child of recast. People looked up to you. People followed you. People took your advice. And at the end of the day, what you did was you basically told them people they did it for nothing. Because you still going to entertain it. You still going to watch it. You still going to promote it. You still going to elevate it. And you're going to talk about it. It's crazy. Because you said last time Black Panther came out, you rented out a movie theater. And you weren't sure if you were going to do it this time. And we looked at you. We looked at you. Because you know what this movie represents. And while we understood you had to get your paper, nobody judged you. It was like, hey, if you got to review it, review it. But now you're going to host a watch party. The watch party ain't you reviewing it. The watch party is you promoting it. Because if you're watching it and it's a party, don't nobody really have a bad time at a party. A party is about a celebration. It is. I would love to see, I would love to say that I, did, that I didn't expect this. I would love to say that I'm disappointed. You know what I am? Because you took valuable months of time away from the movement. You wasted valuable time. You wasted valuable resources. I hope it was all worth it. I hope you get what you're looking for. I hope you don't mind that it... You shitted on some people along the way. That ain't what this video is about. But this video is about loyalty. It's about not being sold out. It's about a billion dollar franchise business taking advantage of one of ours, misrepresenting one of ours, and misspeaking and misleading on so many fronts when it comes to us, not just as black people, but as fans of T'Challa, Fans of Black Panther, everything Wakanda, and fans of Chadwick Boseman. Crazy, you said it was too soon to request, to recast. Y'all got a lot of damn excuses over there at Marvel, which is crazy. Because when it comes down to doing the right thing, the guy that y'all say y'all looked up to, Chadwick Boseman, <clears throat> Mm 
Never hesitate to do the right thing. Sick and all, he still took care of his people. I'm going to be honest with you, Marvel. And I might be saying too much. But honestly, y'all don't deserve to even speak Chadwick Bozeman's name. That's honestly how I feel about it. I ain't saying what you say. Peace.